Okay, here's my uh, my month of part-time work that ended up taking me closer to five months. New canvas for an old town 20-foot guide canoe. First thing you got to do when you start one of these projects is strip the old canvas off. Well, in this case, it was canvas that had been fiberglassed on by somebody, and fortunately, the uh, fiberglass didn't adhere to the wood and I could get the uh, fiberglass off. But what I found underneath you can see was not good. There was a lot of dry rod and some of the fiberglass had ripped parts of the wood out. It, it wasn't pretty. But hey, what are you going to do? It's an old canoe. It's 65 years old. Uh, who knows, uh, this is probably the original stem and everything that's in it. So, hey, I stripped it down. This is what I found. It really wasn't bad. I took it outside, tipped it up, figured I'd look at the bottom. Didn't look too bad till I got looking close. Then I found little holes and stuff like this. But again, not too bad. The ends, <laughs> both ends, they, they were pretty sad. There was a lot of rot. Uh, stem was gone both ends a lot of the deck but the inside was the worst it was all this salmon colored paint that somebody had put on it so I put paint stripper on it and pressure washed it lightly and got all that stuff off and went back inside to attack these ends so uh, cedar shingles uh, uh, saran wrap for a, re a release agent and then I put uh, reinforcing pieces in behind and built a new stem out of sawdust and west system epoxy and this is after a couple applications and it's cleaned up a little bit and here's uh, another application and you can see everything's starting to fill out uh, it's coming back to shape I'm getting some real strength here again but this whole corner on this side is still gone so another layer and a little more sanding actually hours of sanding <laughs> and uh, next thing you know you start to have a, a shape to the deck and in uh, top part of the uh, bow curve but the ends are still bad I've got to do something to those but you can see things are shaping up it's starting to look at an end the bad part of these canoes is though they have two ends <laughs> so all the work and stuff I've done on this end got to start all over on the other end here I am I got a mixture of uh, sawdust and west system epoxy again and while that is curing I've got plenty to do inside the canoe there's all kinds of uh, sanding and scraping to be done flip the thing over and strip off some of the planking and replace some of that I mean it just goes on and on <laughs> it's uh, it turns out to be quite a project I was surprised how long it took so uh, I found all kinds of bad planking uh, I've replaced it uh, you put all these on with brass tacks I did those flat spots earlier because hey these curved ones are a little trickier I used a uh, cobbler's uh, clinching tool I didn't have a clinching iron uh, but that cobbler's tool would reach in here and, and uh, round off those brass tacks uh, even in those curved areas so that worked out pretty good and so with all the planking replaced I put linseed oil to the whole thing and got out the canvas that I bought from Island Fall Falls Canoe and uh, Jerry Stolmark and the people up there was a, they were a great help uh, I couldn't have done this project without them and uh, you see the canoe now in the canvas uh, I stretched the canvas overnight Relax the tension, put the uh, canoe in there, and put those heavy bags in there of mulch that you see that are weighting it down. Uh, pulled it back up to a tight tension. And uh, too tight a tension, you can see these rays and creases that are forming in the canvas. In Jerry's book, it said if you get those to back off the tension, let it lighten up a little bit like I've got it here. And once it's lightened up like that, you go ahead and uh, trim the canvas down uh, the whole length of it so that you can get a hold of the canvas with a pair of pliers and pull it up and put in a brass nail. And uh, I've cut the sides down here, pulled all the sides up, nailed it the whole length of it. 
and I'm about to take it out and release it from these clamps on the ends and flip it over so that I can split the uh, canvas. You see here it's split and uh, now you got to take those ends and wrap them over and nail them down and wrap the other piece over you know so they overlap and believe me this epoxy that you see here that's shaped so nicely with the wood wasn't easy to shape because it's like iron so uh, after a lot of work and stuff I got these ends on I got the pieces overlapped and I got filler uh, in all of the uh, creases and got that end smoothed up and moved to this other end and you can see what I had to do here with this brass tack is I had to drill all these holes ahead of time I couldn't just drive a nail into that those brass nails wouldn't even begin to penetrate but if you pre-drill the holes and then drove the brass tack in the brass filled up the hole and you see uh, the end there did close up and here is the canoe itself covered with filler and smoothed up and it, that went really fast believe me it took hours to do that filler work so I flipped the canoe over here and I'm checking the inside of it checking for any nails that I missed as far as clinching them down and tightening them up because a lot of them had worked loose and would make bumps in the canvas and you can see here's my deck uh, uh, I've got everything pretty much in the shape I wanted I gotta sand this deck down some more the ends like I said those are all covered over uh, they're sealed well. This is all rubbed down now with filler. And so once you get the filler, hours of filler done, ha, you get to paint it. And so I slapped a coat of paint on this thing. And uh, then I slapped another coat of paint on it. And, and still, you know, it needs another coat of paint. Uh, and just like in the, in the uh, filler, the bugs land on the filler, the bugs land on the paint. It's what happens if you're not in a closed environment. So I got tired of all of that. I went sailing. I took the boat, the canoe, I, ha I hauled it up to camp. I set it up in my backyard at camp and I sailed a few days and got back to the canoe. And started to put tongue oil and varnish on the inside. Lots of time sanding and varnishing and all that sort of thing. But all the time I was varnishing and sanding the inside, I was doing the outside rails with varnish as well. And here you see me putting them on. You start in the middle and work out towards both ends. And get these outside rails on. And, and uh, they've got four or five coats of varnish on them now. And I'll just go touch up where I drilled all these holes to fasten them cut off the ends and you got to shape those and then there's the brass piece that comes down around and protects the ends you got to shape those rails with a plane and get them all down to smooth and then you got to get something to haul this on because I, I don't load canoes on top of trucks anymore not 125 pound canoes anyway so I put this one inch foam on these two by fours and cut it to shape uh, so that it would nest that canoe nicely down in these uh, foam pads and of course I'm going to cover all these foam pads with canvas uh, rug and uh, so uh, that all of that done in the meantime I'm doing more coats of varnish on this and, and smoothing off the ends and touching up those pieces and then a thunderstorm comes along and fills the canoe with rain and it's upside right and I'm away from camp and I come back and it's almost broken in half and I say that's it no more work I put the anchor system on and I go fishing and there you go canvas on a 65 year old canoe it was quite a project but it was well worth the effort <laughs>